Another often overlooked advantage to using promises over callbacks is the fact that we can, without any additional code, set up a situation where we can have a series of promises and tell the script that we don't want whatever our next step in the process is to actually start before all of our promises are resolved. So what do we mean by that? Well, the best example is with using fetch. The new ES6 fetch syntax uses promises to make an AJAX call to a server to bring back resources. With promises, with fetches, we can say, I want to do this fetch and this fetch and this fetch, but not do anything on my page, not do anything with the results, until or unless I get all of these things back. So you can see in my code sample that I've got here, got the list of users, got the list of tweets, got the weather. So maybe I'm going to be doing something to update my web page, but I only want to do it if all of these things are done. So we can pretend that these are fetch calls. I'm just going to leave it as the promise syntax because it's going to keep my example uh, fairly straightforward and easy to do. These could be fetches as well. Um, so I've got P1, P2, P3. My three promises, they are functions. And normally we do P1, make the call to that, then, and then have my function. And then I could do the same thing for P2 and P3. So we'd have all three of these. And then there's three separate functions that are running at three separate times. And I have no idea which one's going to run first. Let's say that's not going to meet the needs of my web page. I need to do something where don't make any updates until all three of these things. Maybe I want to use the tweets related to these users. Maybe I need to have information about the users or the tweets before I display the weather. Whatever the, whatever the case is, we're not going to individually look at these. What we want to do is use the promise.all method. It's going to be expecting an array. What are the promises that you want to be met? Give me a list of all of the promises that have to be met. So, call to P1, call to P2, call to P3. Those are my three promises. Now, they don't have to be functions. Um, we could just do this. Say P3 is equal to that, and then P3 is no longer a function call. Just to show you that it does work that way. Promise.all says, here's the list. When all of these have been met, when they're all resolved, not rejected, none of them can be rejected for this to work. Every one of them has to be resolved. Then, and inside my function here, I will have a results array. This function now will have access to an array of results. So we can in any order we want, because we have all the results now from all three promises, we can say, I want to write out the results array. We'll do number one. And then I'll do number zero. And then I'll do number two. So I should get, when this runs, the tweets, then the user, then the weather being displayed. So let's take a look at that. Here we go. Tweets, users, weather. And that's all it takes. So you can define your promises anywhere anywhere you want in the code. And then define this all method so that you pass in an array of all the promises that you want to use. When all three of them, or four of them, or however many you have, even if it's just two, when they are all resolved, this function will run, and this will be an array of the responses from each of these things. And you can use that however you like. As always, questions, please leave them in the comments.